Hello, I'm Debbie Ellickson. I spent most of my adult life in a locker room covering professional sports as an administrator for pro and amateur sports. There are five things that I learned when I didn't realize I was a pioneer in this arena. And these five things are, number one, hide your emotions. I'm a soppy mess when it comes to emotions. I will tear up at the slightest thing sometimes and cried at the end of Return of the Jedi when Darth Vader died. So when it comes to sports and reporting, you cannot show your emotions. As a woman, sometimes you have this gene in you that causes you to tear up at things. You need to do everything in your power to suppress that. Suppress it because as Tom Hanks says, there is no crying in baseball and there is no crying in professional sports, even when you're fired. Number two, be fearless, even when you're scared. My first National Hockey League interview was with a wonderful player, and he had all the patience in the world for this brand new reporter. Anyway, there were no other women that I could see anytime I went to the rink, specifically in the media. I was scared out of my tree, but I couldn't let anyone see that I was scared. Thank God I wore a long skirt because you couldn't see my knees shaking. When I arranged this interview, I arranged it with a PR director that I would do a one-on-one -on -one with him. I had a whole list of questions. Because I wasn't quite brave enough to go into the locker room for the first time, I had to wait outside the locker room and wait for this player. Well, by the time he came out, pretty much the entire arena had emptied out, including the locker room. He was the last to leave. Still, he honestly gave me his time and answered every single one of my questions. The next time I went to the rink, I knew I had to go in. I couldn't afford to wait forever for players outside the locker room. Many of them wouldn't have the patience this player had. So I had to suck it up and go inside with everybody else. My first time in the locker room and and players are parading back and forth in front of me, you know, not wearing even a towel. My fellow reporters are amazing and they treated me as an equal. So I was in the best city to be covering sports for the first time. Anyway, these players <laughs> were challenging me, I think, to try and figure out what my reaction would be. I did not react to them at all. I carried on as if they were doing what they were doing. The next time I went into the dressing room, I must have passed the test because they were acting as normal as they were with the other reporters. Number three is treat every person the way you want to be treated. That goes from the janitor to the president. There are two people who stand out in my career who one of them is a media fellow and the other one is a player. Both of these individuals have this gift that when you talk to them, doesn't matter who's around, when you talk to them, they made you feel like you were the only people in the room. That to me is just a special gift. To make yourself memorable, you need to treat people kindly. You need to treat them with respect. Most importantly, I think you need to treat the staff with respect because it's the security people, it's the janitors, it's the people that work around the game. They're there all the time. And they're sometimes they're incognito. In other words, a lot of people don't notice them because they're doing their job and they're not necessarily one of the high profile people others are looking for. These people see everything. If you treat them with respect, there's a couple of things that can happen. If you get into a bind, they will help you out. They can tell you things that nobody else will know. I've had the experience where I've been talking to a fellow that works in the concourse and the president or somebody else would walk by. I might glance over and nod and acknowledge them and say hello but I would not interrupt my conversation with the person I'm talking with. Treat people with respect. Be memorable that way. Number four, you do not have to accept unacceptable behavior. One and two will help alleviate this experience a little bit. 
But don't underestimate the power of walking away, just grinning and bearing it. Sometimes when you grin and bear it, it puts you in a position of power. It just means it makes them look like a bigger jerk. I've had so many experiences of this, both in a sports arena and in other environments where somebody will do something. They won't necessarily do it so others can see it, but they'll do it to you. But what I will do when it's happened more than once, I will just turn to them and say out loud, loud enough for everybody in the room to hear and just call them out on it and just tell them stop doing and name what they're doing and walk away. Chances are, if you do that and call them out in front of other people, <laughs> they stop doing it. Now, in the sporting arena, it isn't always possible, depending on who that person is. But a lot of times that person isn't necessarily the person in power. If it is the person in power, then you have to really decide if you really want to work there. Whenever that's happened to me, and the next time I've seen that person in the crowd, I've heard the muffle curses at me under their breath. Well, loud enough for me to hear, but maybe nobody else can hear. I wear that as a badge of honor. Number five, be strategic. I treat every hockey game as a networking event. I want to meet all the people that I can. I want to learn as much about the people as I can. There is one story and the first round of the playoffs before I walked into the rink, I thought to myself, I am going to meet somebody who's one of my disciples. I just get halfway down the concourse. And there is a player that I always had a great rapport. It was unusual for him to be there because neither of the teams that were playing were, were a team that he played for. He was there with a broadcast crew covering the game. And it was his first stint in broadcasting. He was a bit nervous. I kind of showed him the ropes a little bit and showed him where he had to go. When he came in the dressing room, I explained what the procedure was and told him that if you need anything, I'm here. Not sticking to yourself and hiding in a corner. You develop a camaraderie with people. For me particularly, it put me on a list for fill-in positions and some other assignments. You never know where it will take you. But being strategic, what do you want? What do you want for your career? Where do you want it to go? Those are things that I learned along the way when I didn't realize I was being a pioneer. 